Does your spaceship explode when you want to undock? Are your airplanes haunted by weird colored dots? Do your rockets want to hide in shame under the floor of the vehicle assembly building? Worry not, I have a solution for you. Hello everybody and welcome. Last week the developers have released Kerbal Space Program 2 version 0.1.1, also known as Patch 1 for the early access game. It brought 281 changes, which I talked about in last Sunday's video, so if you want to know more, you should watch that by clicking on the icon up top or the link in the video description. Unfortunately, but not unexpectedly if we're being honest, quite a few game-breaking bugs still remain within the game. But for at least three of them, I can offer you workarounds until they are permanently fixed with one of the upcoming patches. First up. The disappearing trick! Ever had a situation where you wanted to load a vehicle, you heard the loaded sound effect but the dialogue would remain open and when you then click it away, you see your vessel in shambles on the floor or parts missing completely? Well, there's finally some explanation for this. KSP2 allows something the predecessor hasn't in the same way and that is joining together multiple levels of symmetry. If I have my 8 tanks radially attached to my center stack and then add 8 engines, that's totally fine. But if I add other types of symmetry, let's say 4 times, then it will put 4 engines of each of the 8 tanks, raising the total amount of engine parts in symmetry to 32. Then this particular Kraken will strike your vehicle. But not immediately, only when you close this vessel and want to load it again later. So, how can we prevent this? The vehicle acts totally fine when you remove the part you want to add additional symmetry to, add those additional parts on the side and then mount it to the main vehicle later when you got it configured to your liking. See? That's how it's done. No problems loading this variant of otherwise exactly the same vehicle. But why does this even happen? From what I've learned, this is because the game in its current form cannot deal with symmetries larger than 8 right now. What I've also learned is that the developers have changed this already internally and have tested with symmetries up to 1000. What's the upper limit going to be? We will surely find out. We stick to vehicle building for our second Kraken wrangling tip. The Skittles of Doom. If you already watched my first impressions video on KSP2, you might know this scene. A massive Joule 5 launch vehicle implodes on the pad, but the engines stay functional anyway and fire when you activate your staging. The eagle-eyed among you might have noticed some weird colored dots all over the vehicle. Well, as it turns out, those things are nasty and if you see them, your craft is done for. No chance of getting it working, no matter how often you reload. But there's a very clear culprit for this. The ST-1 Microtruss, formerly known as Cubic Octagonal Strut in Kerbal Space Program 1. I like this part a lot, usually, because you can utilize it to add attachment nodes where none are present. But if you radially attach this part in KSP2 and then attach another part on its node, the Skittles of Doom will appear to ruin your day. Interestingly, however, if you just radially attach the Microtruss, everything appears to be in order. Also, if you attach a small part with one of its nodes and then attach another part on the other node, everything works fine. So, for the time, steer clear of radial attachment for this part with another part attached to one of its nodes. But where do the colored dots come from? My source tells me that this is debug information that should never be visible to players and is there for developers only. For now, we have to work around it until this is fixed. Which leads me to my final game-breaking Kraken in this video. The Undock Undertaker. If you watched my video where I put a rover on Minmus, then the Mum and then landed it back on Kerbin, you might have noticed that I put struts on radial decouplers. That's for a very good reason, because if I had mounted the struts from the pylons of the transfer stage to the rover directly, this would have happened. Yeah, not good. I can only speculate, but I believe the game not only destroys the struts upon undocking, as it should, but everything else between the strut and docking port, as it shouldn't. 
But if you put the struts on radial decouplers and fire those first, you can avoid this type of headache. I have to admit, I am not 100% sure that this still happens with vehicles you create from scratch with patch 1. My rover here is a build I started in the original release, version 0.1.0, which was released on February 24th. Any vehicle built after the March 16th patch might fare better. Also, there might be some other docking related kraken in the game that cannot be remedied by this workaround. But just in case, try undocking everything on the pad before reverting to launch. You don't want to find out almost at your interplanetary target after hours of gameplay that something is utterly broken. So, in summary, when you want to add multiple parts to a part in symmetry, better do it separately and then add the assembly to the main build. Avoid radially attaching the ST1 microtruss and then attaching something to its nodes. If you make a bigger build where one part will undock later, use the couplers to get rid of the struts before you undock. Do these three things and you will have fewer Kraken visits when planning out your missions in the VAB. Of course, these are all just temporary workarounds until the developers will be able to release a fix. Nate Simpson said on Friday in an AMA on the official Intercept Games Discord that their priority at the moment is stabilizing the game and optimizing performance before adding new features. He also outlined some of the fixes already included in the upcoming patch too, but the date for that is not yet public. And I know they were working on the root causes for the issues listed here or are at least very close to solving them. So expect them to be resolved sooner than later. Alright, this was just a quick video since I've been out most of the week due to some kind of flu that got to me. You might have noticed my voice keeping deeper than usual. Next week I will hopefully have more in store for you. If you have encountered any weird or game-breaking bugs that can be easily worked around like the three I mentioned here, please let everyone know in the comments. Or we can chat about it over on my Discord server, link is in the description. What's also in the description is a link to my Patreon site. You can support me and this channel by becoming a Patreon for a small fee over there. And you will have my everlasting gratitude. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.